This is India's new parliament building. Steeped in controversy and a staggering 2.8 billion investment, this audacious feat of engineering and design is set to redefine India's physical identity on the global stage. The heart of India's democracy, the symbol of its legislative power, is undergoing a dramatic transformation that could alter the very fabric of its political landscape. But why is this happening? Why uproot the old and usher in the new? Why attempt to rewrite history? Today we will answer all of these burning questions and dive headfirst into one of India's most contentious, complex and colossal construction projects. This isn't just a story about bricks and mortar. It's about power, politics and patriotism, all under the shadow of a rising political party. This is the story of India's new parliament house. A mere decade ago, the idea of a brand new parliament house was just a whisper in the echoing corridors of India's political epicentre. It was akin to proposing to tear down the Eiffel Tower and put up a gleaming new skyscraper in its place. Radical, revolutionary, some might even say reckless. But over time, the whispers grew louder and the need for a new abode for the lawmakers of the world's largest democracy grew more apparent. The old parliament house, or Sansad Bhavan as it's locally known, a dignified 96-year-old structure was showing its age. And not like a fine wine. It was groaning under the pressures of modern democracy, bustling with more legislators and their bustling staff than it was ever meant to house. This wasn't your typical out with the old, in with the new scenario. It was a matter of practicality and crucially, safety. For you see, the existing structure designed by British architects Sir Edwin Lutyens and Sir Hubert Baker was creaking under the burden of change. Over the years, design alterations have compromised the structural stability of this national heritage site. Imagine the nation's representatives debating vital bills under a roof that could, quite literally, come crashing down on them. Sounds more like an Indiana Jones movie than the seat of one of the world's most vibrant democracies, right? In addition, the old building had little support for electronic developments that occurred in the past two decades and wasn't earthquake proof. This is a chilling fact given that Delhi, the city home to the parliament, lies precariously close to seismic fault lines. It was a ticking time bomb that had to be defused. Yet, the old parliament house is more than just bricks and mortar. It is a symbol, a memory of India's colonial past and a testament to its resilient journey towards self-rule. So, the government needed to tread lightly. Preserve the old while ushering in the new. A task that turns out was easier said than done. From the start, the construction of the new Parliament House raised several eyebrows. Costing nearly 120 million just for the single building, coupled with a lack of consultation and awful timing, it had many questioning the democratic process and the need for a brand new structure. Critics argued that the old structure could have been renovated instead. Environmentalists, politicians and civil society groups were among those raising their voices. The opposition had some strong words about the Central Vista's project's construction amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, imagine this, thousands of citizens were gasping for breath, desperate for hospital beds and oxygen, and meanwhile, they were building a parliament building. In fact, the project was listed under essential services, allowing construction to continue unabated even when all others were halted by the Supreme Court. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that's what they call being above the law. And that wasn't all. Environmental concerns revealed that about 2,466 trees had to be uprooted for the Central Vista revamp. While they promised to plant 10 trees for every one removed, the survival rate was as dismal as the fate of most houseplants, 
only 30% manage to make it. The controversies don't end there either. The ruling Bharati Janata Party also faced a backlash for sidelining the president, Draupadi Murmu, during the inauguration. Typically, it is the president's honour to be performing such a task. Still, instead this time, it was Prime Minister Narendra Modi that became the star of the show. This was quite literally a slap on the face of their democracy, as many people thought it was the president's gig to launch the structure. The result was a grand boycott by 19 opposition parties. And let's not forget the Supreme Court hearing on the matter, which added another layer of drama. To top it all off, the inauguration date stirred up more controversy. The event coincided with the anniversary of V.D. Savkar, a figure with a contentious legacy due to his connection with the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi. As controversies go, this was a thorny one. But yet, even with all these controversies, the construction of this building never stopped and produced a facelift of epic proportions for the new parliament. Behind this 21st century facelift is the architect, Bimal Patel. The centerpiece of this mega project is the new parliament house which took approximately two and a half years to build. The construction began on October 1st, 2020 and finished on May 28th, 2023. It mirrors the original hexagonal shape and despite being an architectural marvel, it remains humble in its size, almost equal to the former structure. The building boasts a staggering area of 65,000 square meters, including an open sky area of 2,000 meters squared, with a height of 40 meters. That's equivalent to about three football fields with enough room for a banyan tree. But that's not all. It boasts 888 seats in the Lok Sabha chamber and 384 in the Raja Sabha, reaching a total seating capacity of 1,272. The seating capacity in the Lok Sabha and the Raja Sabha chambers far exceed the current number of members. A sort of anticipation of the future making room for an ever-increasing number of lawmakers and their staff. But unlike the previous parliament building, the new building does not have a central hall. And the rest of the building? Four floors of offices for ministers and committee rooms. This structure is expected to stand tall and strong for at least the next 150 years. In addition, it is designed to be earthquake resistant and a testament to the country's growth and resilience. It's more than a building, it's a promise to future generations. And here's where it gets truly fascinating. The immaculate design combines architectural styles from every corner of India, a physical embodiment of the country's diversity. Influenced by the unique design of the old parliament house, the new design also draws heavily from Hindu architecture, with hints from the Yogini temple at Mithaloli. A rich tapestry of cultural aesthetics weaved together, every stitch telling a different tale from the country's vibrant past. With this new design, Bhimal Patel aimed to carve a unique identity that spoke of an evolving India. Yet behind his intentions, it seems India's people are split on the matter. Regardless of how pretty this building may look, the controversy behind it may taint it forever. From the apparent need to upgrade the old building to the controversies and criticism surrounding the project, it's been an intriguing tale of politics, history and architecture that we've unravelled. The new Parliament House undeniably marks a new era for India, echoing the nation's evolution and potential growth. While the architectural prowess of the new building is breathtaking, the project's overall value, given the myriad of challenges India faces, has been a point of contention. What does this mean for the Indian people and the world at large? Is it a monument of national pride or a symbol of misplaced priorities. Ultimately, 
The true worth of the new Parliament House will be determined by the actions that transpire within its walls and the impact it has on the nation's progress and democracy. In the end, buildings, no matter how grand or humble, are only as significant as the principles they stand for and the actions they facilitate. This monumental structure will host the future leaders of India, the people's representatives, who hold in their hands the power to shape the nation's destiny. Here's to hoping that the spirit of democracy thrives within the walls of the new Parliament House, ensuring it serves as a beacon of positive change and progress. As we wrap up, we encourage you to continue the conversation. What are your thoughts on the new Parliament House? Engage with us, share your opinions, and let's further enrich this discussion. After all, democracy is not just about magnificent buildings, it's about vibrant dialogues and diverse voices. Thank you for joining us in this exploration. Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning, and most importantly, keep engaging. <laughs>